As an illustration, consider the following problem. Show using the definition of a limit that the limit of x approaching 1 x approaching 1 of 3x minus 3 divided by the square root of x minus 1 equals 6. So now we will use the precise definition of a limit. So for a given epsilon larger than 0, we will find, try to find or prescribe a de delta epsilon such that the distance of the function under consideration, which is 3x minus 3 divided by the square root of one, x minus 1, is close enough to 6. And here I will just show that for delta epsilon equals 1 over 3 times epsilon, that for most cases, for most epsilons, for epsilon small enough, that this works. So we will show that for all x in the domain of f, yeah, the f under consideration is the fraction 3x minus 3 divided by the square root of x minus 1. So the domain is anything that is non-negative and unequal to the value 1. So that x in the symmetric interval 1 minus delta 1 plus delta except for 1 so that we get, yeah, so this can be written differently. So the absolute value, these are all x's for which the absolute value of x minus 1 is in the interval, open interval, 0 delta. Uh, by delta we I mean delta epsilon, so 1 over 3 times epsilon. That the function value, 3 of x minus 3 divided by square root of x minus 1 minus 6, so the distance of fx to 6 is smaller than epsilon. Well... What I am going to do is write 3x minus 3 as 3 times x minus 1 divided by the square root of x minus 1. So minus 6. Why am I doing this? Well, actually, what we see is that the square root of x minus 1 is a factor in x minus 1. So we may factorize x minus 1 as the square root of x minus 1 times the square root of x plus 1. And this simplifies, under the assumption that x is not equal to 1, this simplifies to simply the square root of x plus 1. Yeah, so here we get the absolute value of fx minus 6 equals the square root of 3 times the square root of x plus 1, yeah, in brackets, the square root of x plus 1 minus 6, uh, which again simplifies to the square root of the, the absolute value of, the, of 3 times the square root of x minus, yeah, 3 times the square root of x minus 3, and this equals 3 times the absolute value of the square root of x minus 1. And what we'll do now is the square root trick again. So that we have the square root of x minus 1. And we try to remove the square root from the numerator. So that we now multiply by the square root of x plus 1. And if we do so, we have to multiply with the square root of x plus 1 in the denom denominator, like so. And by doing so, we see that actually in the numerator, the term simplifies to x minus 1. So we get the absolute value of x minus 1 divided by the square root of x plus 1, an absolute value. But this, of course, equals the absolute value of x minus 1 divided by the square root of x plus 1. And the square root of x is always at least 0. So we may make the fraction that we have larger by removing the square root of x 
as a whole, in, in which case we would just div divide by 1. So this is smaller or equal than 3 times the absolute value of x minus 1. Now we use actually our choice. Look at the star. So x minus 1 absolute value is smaller than delta. So we get that 3 times absolute value x minus 1 is smaller than 3 times delta epsilon that we have specified before. And this delta epsilon equals 3 times 1 third epsilon. So this equals epsilon. So now we've shown that the absolute value of fx minus 6 is in absolute value smaller than epsilon. We need to be careful here because actually implicitly we assumed that um, the square root of x that actually for all delta epsilon that 1 minus delta 1 plus delta uh, was in the domain of f but this is actually not true because we need to be sure that the square root of x is larger or equal than 0 in which case delta epsilon can be only at most 1 now you th try and think what happens if delta epsilon is larger than 1 